Sasuke is not welcome <laughs> in my heart. <laughs> like Armin and Zenitsu in mine. Yeah, did you like that Zenitsu pillow that I sent you? No. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Naruto today, though. I want to talk about Promise Neverland, because I finished the manga. I know. That was so exciting when you told me you were done. I loved it. I loved the I manga. Know, it was amazing. And then I ruined my life by watching the second season after mm-hmm. the manga, just to see the differences and stuff, because everyone's talking about it. Yeah. And it was just legitimately horrible, so we won't even talk about the second season of the anime. We can talk about the first season of the anime, because it was really good. But. Yeah, first season was great. But the manga is incredible, and I love it. Oh, yeah, totally. I agree. I love Promise Neverland. Okay, so they escaped, mm-hmm. right? That's like the first season, mm-hmm. which is only four volumes, by the way. Did you know that? It only covers four volumes. And then volume five out of 20 is where that story picks up on. Mm-hmm. So the fact, I am going to just say this about the second season. The fact that the second season literally sums up the entire thing in 12 episodes is so pathetic. Like, I just was like so disappointed. I, I won't say pathetic because yeah, here's funny. the thing. I really don't know why they chose to edit it like that maybe they had like a legitimate reason and in that case it was probably impressive that they were able to cut it down so much to just finish the story like if they for whatever reason couldn't do a season three or like i don't know something happened but so all the best parts of the manga were completely left out like lucas well, and yeah Yugo, who you, are can, like you our don't favorite. take out those characters right well and oliver lucas Yugo, right. and oliver and all of their right. friends from the hunting grounds don't even appear so That's kind of what I want to talk about, though, is, like, them in the manga, because it starts with them escaping, Mm -hmm. and then they meet... Well, they fall into, like, the snake tree thing, and then they figure out how to get out of that, because they all work together as a family. And then, basically, I want to start from where they meet Sanju and Mujika, because... Those are, like, the first characters that are introduced that Mm -hmm. are kind of important... Yeah, I like, so there are a couple parts that I like, obviously, with that. One thing that has to do with Ray that I really like is that Ray almost immediately figures out that they're demons, though. I know, he's like, so I smart. Like, I think that, yeah, it just shows his character more. Because you always hear that he's, like, intelligent, and I just like those moments where it shows his intelligence. No yeah. one else picked up on that, you know. Emma was like, huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> Emma was like, demon <laughs> Like, <laughs> like their huge demon feet were like sticking out of their robes and she hadn't even noticed them clunking around like with claws and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was weird. I just, I love those moments though, where it's just like Ray knows what's going on. He's intelligent. I feel, okay. I feel like Ray is observant mm-hmm. and probably because he has that memory thing where like he never forgets mm-hmm. anything from the time he was like in the womb. And then I think Norman is like the most intellectual as far as being able to like learn and apply his knowledge. And then I feel like Emma is almost more concerned about like her physical health than her mental health, even though she's like incredibly smart, but people who are physically healthy tend to also have like more mental clarity. So I think her intelligence Mm. more comes from like a healthy body. Yeah. And they do talk about that with her. Yeah. So through like mental clarity, observational skills and just like general intelligence, I think the three of them, make a really, really good team. And that's Mm -hmm. why they're the three that are able to actually figure out how to leave like an impossible place to escape from. Yeah. His mother is a crazy psycho person. I know she is. I love the way, I mean, this kind of goes back a little bit to the, before the, they actually escape, but just seeing the whole plan kind of come together and they all have different things and different ways they want to like, this is how it's going to be. But the way it all comes together is like super cool. Yeah. Ray has his own idea of what he's going to do. Norman figures out what Ray wants to do and tells Emma not to let him do it, you know, and then Emma, without being noticed by mother, totally everyone else on the team just, like, takes it from there, and they train. Yeah, she, like, organizes all the other kids. Mm -hmm. Like, she has an ability to lead, and yeah. It's super cool. I loved the way all of that came together. I thought it was so well written. I do think Ray's plan is, like, a fail-safe where he's, like, Mother's not going to let me burn up, and so she'll come after me because I'm the next... What do they call him? I'm the next shipment or whatever. hmm And he's probably right. She probably would have done everything she could to try and save him. But then Emma's yeah. plan is even better because what would she do without Ray? Like, I how know, would They Emma, would have all died without Ray. 
I know. How would she have tried to actually keep the family together without him? He's like the father figure. I tell Lucas. And then oh, Oliver Lucas. tells us that Lucas and is the father go. figure. I love Lucas, dude. Let's just talk. Let's just skip to them. So then they okay. make it to. <laughs> well, that's why the second season is so stupid is because literally you can't take out those characters. I know. Like, they left out the best You can't. And people can't tell me that it was about not having enough material to make the season because no, they literally plenty. skipped over all of that. Like, well, and they left out. I don't all even know of, what like, they the were doing. Intense- I don't know, okay. but a story that's written as beautifully as this one, you don't hurry up and finish it to like finish the story. Take your time, make it a ten season thing without fillers. Lucas and Hugo and Oliver mm-hmm. and their friends that I don't remember. Yeah, their friends but <laughs> are like a huge part of Emma's development and Emma's like desire to save more people than just because she wants to go back and save all the kids at grace filled but mm-hmm. now she's like oh my gosh there's kids everywhere mm-hmm. like we need to come up with like a sure solution that's going to get everybody into the human world and i feel like you don't really get develop like you don't learn as much without lucas you don't learn as much without Hugo. like you they spent what a year and a half learning from them after they escaped from the the hunting grounds like they spent, they actually had yeah, father they were together figures for in their lives yeah. for like a year and a half, and that's that was so freaking important for them, especially Oliver. He talks later know, about how Oliver. Lucas, because Peter Rotary tries to tell them that he was their father, yeah. and he's like, you don't know anything about being a father, and he thinks he has like flashbacks about Lucas, and I yeah. cry my eyes out. But no, I know Lucas and Oliver, their relationship is like amazing. Well, and then you have. Lucas and Hugo, who mm-hmm. their relationship started when they were kids. They grew yeah. up together in a farm. Their relationship is amazing, too. And well, they're just like Ray and Emma and exactly. Norman. And you see, and- like, what happens to them as they age. Mm-hmm. One of them is, like, seriously wounded. He doesn't have, what, an arm or a leg or something. I think he's missing an arm, and his leg yeah. is, like, doesn't function very well. But... He's been trying to f- help the kids escape the hunting grounds for 13 years. And then you have Hugo, who's been completely alone. And you just see, yeah. like, the effect that the demon world has had on them. Yeah. They were such important characters, I think, just for, like, the psychology of the story. Yeah. No, I agree. Totally. And then Oliver. You get Oliver's character because he's been through all of that. Like, he, he's kind of like the Levi character that comes in in the most pivotal moments and either kills a demon or saves everyone. Or, like, Oliver's, like, a really key element in the story yeah i feel like that's not someone you just take out no so that group joins them they like join forces even though well actually let's talk about lucas and hugo's death because i I thought it was so (laughs) (laughs) i thought it was so well done though where they knew it was their responsibility to go back and kill the soldiers because right they needed to save the kids and they were the adults and they even talk about like this is our duty to protect you guys and let you like move on to a better future and then there's a part okay so someone is attacking one of the demon no not one of the demons one of the human soldiers attacks Hugo and Lucas saves him and then Lucas wants Hugo to run and leave him and Hugo says like no I'm never leaving you again I've already done that once and I thought you died and he says we'll be together whether we live or die and it's like this just really cool moment where they mm-hmm like their final moments and they finally are together again and they know they both know that they love each other as brother like they were brothers yeah their whole lives it was it was a very like beautifully written death for them it was one thing and i know you know this about me but i hate more than anything on the planet when someone has a beautifully written death like that and then they don't freaking kill the person that they're like trying to kill and andrew would have died in that blast so to make him live for two more seconds doesn't make it dramatic to me that was like the most boring part of the thing because i was like no you could like lucas and Hugo just died to save them all like that dude's dead but they did kill the other five that were or the, was it eight the other seven that were there i don't know whatever however so many it's not that there were. it's not that their deaths were in vain i'm not saying it was in vain but andrew was standing next to them I know. Like, next to them. I know. And they're like, we're going to blow up. Um, And then Andrew just, like, crawls out of there. Like, not fine. He obviously was, like, not fine. (laughs) And is, like, struggling to walk. But he has enough strength to go grab one of the kids and, like, hold him hostage. And tell all the other kids they're going to die. He probably would have died 
eventually anyway right he well, couldn't have been healed yeah of course him. eventually he died two seconds later the no, demon but ate I'm him not saying <laughs> if a demon hadn't like run across his path and yeah but him, he could have killed more would've. of the kids before that happened that's true but he I had think... enough strength to like take one of them he was holding them hostage he's like telling them they're gonna do stuff he he's like ready to kill him as much of a threat i know that the kids had a hard time killing him because he's a human being see but which no. i thought was kind of dumb yeah you just kill him but but the thing is, he wasn't as much of a threat to them. Like, if he was at full power, full strength, <laughs> he's like Goku. I know, if like, which, was, which anime he, are we talking about? I'm just kidding. <laughs> if he hadn't powered up, or if he had, <laughs> oh my gosh. It would have been way worse for the kids, but he was, like, half Right, he was already. wounded, for sure. But I, that's, like, why I'm like, okay, he doesn't crawl out of it and stand there for two seconds looking like he's going to murder a couple of them. And then what actually kills him is, like, a demon. that just, like, a wild demon that, like, is running past. Which Emma, I'm sorry, would not have had time to grab that child before he got eaten. Like, that child would have died. And then Emma would have, too. Because Emma wasn't <laughs> even that close. Like, no. Yeah, she was further I away. I thought that was weird, too. But. Things like that do bug me a little. And, I mean, obviously, I'm, like... That's not going to stop me from loving. I freaking love Promise Neverland. It is literally one of the best written, to me, one of the best written mangas ever. Like, And Lucas and Yugo dying really didn't... I know that you get much more irked by, like, you call it well, unnecessary I do. sacrifice. I do say, yeah, pointless deaths and That's stuff. It it's is. it's not that it's pointless, but I just, I hate when... They can't just sacrifice themselves, and that's the end of it. Like and like reach their goal. The person died. They protected them. Like why can't that be a thing for any? Like no mangas out there ever do that. So when things like that happen, I'm like, oh, <laughs> shocker! The person's still alive. Like I did not see that coming. <laughs> I like know. it just. Why can't they just be dead? But you know, most, one time, just is, let them be dead. Most of the time. They either gather intel that's useful and somehow, like, relay that before they die, or they do actually, like, wound the other character enough that they eventually die without inflicting much more harm. Like, with Netero, you were super pissed about Netero dying. I know. But, that pissed me off. I knew the king was still going to be alive. But he that did. Pissed me off. He is the reason that the king died, though. Right. And I get there was supposed to be development with the king after... And all of that. I'm... And the whole death with Komugi was so beautiful. <laughs> Just, it was. It was. Okay. There's a lot of that in most manga. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, just one time. One but time. Death, but I'm saying it's not actually pointless. Like, I feel like they usually advance the story with their sacrifice in some significant way. Well, they did. He, they definitely saved the kids in that moment. Minus the kid that was about to die if the wild demon didn't come by. Like... But one, having one the wild kid. demon be the thing that like saves them, I did not like that. I think Andrew should have just been dead in the blast. Well, didn't Oliver like shoot his hand or something? Oliver probably did a lot of really cool stuff. Like I think Oliver like <laughs> shot him in the hand. Or something. I think he did because he came out of nowhere. He was like, he was like Levi. Yeah, like Levi <laughs> crouching in the trees and then just like <laughs> took sh- took a shot at his hand. But uh... I still think that Hugo and Lucas. Definitely made the right choice. I don't think. Oh that no, their they did. Was like I'm not mad over their death. You're just things not like that. Like I'm just alive. like, why? Just one time, let it happen where they're just dead. But no, their death. It was very beautifully written. Like it was. It was good. It was great. As far, I mean, I didn't want them to die, obviously, but like, I kind of expected it, honestly, as I met the characters. Yeah. And as it was going, I was like, they're for sure just gonna like. Well, they're adults in a shonen, right? So. Well, that's true. <laughs> bye bye. So, bye bye. But um, <laughs> I did. I just couldn't believe that you would want to tell that story without Lucas and Hugo because they're like to me. They right. were sort of like the heart of the story. They were the kids that had grown up. They escaped. They grew into adults. They had experienced like so much trauma, both of them, and then they gave their lives to like help the next generation. That's to me. That's like the heart of the story. Well, and I think it's interesting too that he talks about how he was like Emma. Yeah. You know, like he was the Emma. When they all escaped right. years ago. And, you know, how would Emma, looking at it like that, if Emma literally lost Ray and Norman and Dawn and Gilda and all of them, you know, and, thought it was and watched fault. them all be wiped out and then she's alone for 13 years. Is yeah, she still going to have crazy. that sunny disposition of like everything <laughs> is possible? Yeah. You know, it's like, so it's interesting to see that you go says that he was like Emma, you know, because that's not the kind of 
vibe right away that we get from him. He wants to, like, kill him. <laughs> no, there's a definite, like, murder vibe from him. <laughs> But he Uh, does realize, especially the thing is, like, if he hadn't chosen to care about the kids, he would never have seen Lucas again, too. That was, like, not only hope, but it was actually, like, a chance for him to have a future before he died. So I thought it was great. And he was, I think he was happy to die with Lucas. Right. Because he didn't, like, in the shelter, it was all about survival, no matter what it cost. He just wanted to survive. Mm -hmm. But then once he had his family back, it was like, it's okay. Like, we're able to reconcile not even right. Re- they never had bad blood, but just they were able to like tell each other goodbye. Yeah, just officially. to see each other again. Yeah, and then it was like his death was was peaceful. Yeah. So their story was really touching. It was that. great, and I was really it sad was that great. that was missing from the second season. Yeah, but whatever. And then here's the other thing. So I kind of want to like jump ahead. Mm-hmm. If you're unless if I yeah no miss something go. tell me. But then they team up later in the story with another group. And they're from the Lambda experiments. Mm -hmm. And their leader, who has been posing as William Minerva, who's the guy that's been helping them, is Norman. Mm -hmm. We find out that he's alive. Well, we knew he was alive before because Adam would, like, say his number and then it showed him that he was, like, alive. Yeah. But um, Emma and Ray meet up with Norman in a really cool way. They, like, go to his hideout. They get led there Mm -hmm. by his followers and then taken to speak with him, and they see him and realize he's William Minerva. Yeah. And in the anime, I don't even want to talk about it. It's fine. <laughs> it was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, talk about Norman. <laughs> no, I really like Norman's character. Um, not as much as Ray, for sure. Ray is, like, number one for me. And then, of the, th- of the three main kids, Ray's number one, Emma's number two, and then Norman's number three. But... The part in, you know, season one, as he's getting ready to be, like, shipped off, (laughs) there's, like, a ton of emotion that I feel like is just, like, a part of that, right? Like, and I always felt, I wasn't sure how it was going to be possible that he was still alive, necessarily, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know how, but I always did feel like he would still be alive. It never really showed his body. And mother even says, she's like, oh, no, Norman or whatever, like, come in here. And she like, here, yeah. She sends him off to this other room. And then you never see his body to, like, confirm that he's dead. Right. Mother comes back at one point and is like, well, Norman's dead, you know, to Emma. She, like, says something. But I just never, I was like, no, he can't be dead. Like, that really for sure can't be the end of Norman. Right. And so I always did feel like he'd come back. And then I felt like eventually they were going to meet up with him again. And then when Adam was there, you know, and kept saying his number, like, I feel like there were just little clues like that, too. And so I was super excited when they finally met. Me, too. And I thought that was a really cool part. I was slightly disappointed that Norman, through his intelligence, wasn't the one that figured out how to stay alive. I was kind of hoping he had some weird master plan that he didn't tell anyone. But then... Like, kill Mother out in the alley and... (laughs) Something crazy. (laughs) But then when she came back, obviously that didn't happen. Yeah. But then it was also kind of interesting because there are things in life that, like, no matter how smart you are or no matter how brave you are, Mm. like, you can't overcome it by yourself. Yeah. And sometimes it's luck. Sometimes it's the help of other people. Sometimes it's, like, you ask, like, reaching out to ask for help and then gratefully, like, finding someone that can actually assist you. Yeah. Well, and honestly, here's the thing. I would have been sad if Norman was dead. Mm -hmm. And I felt like he wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. But honestly, if they would have killed him, I feel like his death would have been... They could have done a great death with him, too. Because it was all about saving his friends again and helping them escape and get out. And that's, like, what mattered to him. Well, and he thought he was going to die, and he instead... Right, he totally thought he was dead. (laughs) Instead of escaping, he went and, like scouted the wall right for his friends told emma about how that was ray's plan he had gotten that pen from sister crone Mm -hmm. and like left them you know that to them and everything and i just i don't know i feel like his death could have been great there if they ended up doing it like i would have been sad for sure and i actually i don't usually like actually shed tears during mangas i'll be emotional but i totally did cry when he 
when I thought he was maybe potentially going on to his death, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So that was very, that was like a super emotional thing for me where actually a tear like dropped out, you know? <laughs> I mean, I didn't, that I, is weird. Cause you never, actually I didn't like ball or anything, but like a tear came out, like squeezed out of my eyes. I blinked. <laughs> no, just kidding. Oh my gosh. I cry over everything in anime. Um, I get really emotional, but I usually don't cry, but, but I do like that. He was able to figure out how to like become, William Minerva. It's kind of, okay, explain this to me okay. in your words, because in your- it's kind of interesting that he wouldn't have wanted to see Emma and Ray. You know how, like, they take Emma first? Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's just to be dramatic, because she's, like, the leader, and they're like, Emma, come this way. But Norman, I think, would have specifically been, like, bring Emma and Ray in here, instead of, like, reuniting with Ray. Well, right, because they after. say bring the leader or whatever. They, like, talk about specifically just Emma. And I, I think that Norman is, like, romantically in love with Emma for a child. I agree. Like, I think he has feelings for her. And so he probably was, like, anxious to reunite with her. But, dude, he loved Ray. Like, he was his brother. Why would he not want that reunion to be between the two of them? Right. No, I agree with you. I think it was just to add more drama later so Ray could see him again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was, like, a second time to find out he's alive, you know? <laughs> it was so obvious that Ray was going to slap him. Oh, my gosh, I know. And then he just smiles. And everyone else that knows Norman as, like, the boss is, like, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> which is funny to me that people feel that way about Norman. But And then we get into the section that I like to call Norman Jaeger, <laughs> where Norman presents his plan. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Emma's like, no. But I have, okay. So Norman says we're going to destroy the farms and therefore, like, eliminate the source of the demon's intelligence. They're going to degenerate. And in that sense, we're going to annihilate the demons and take over the demon world and then Mm -hmm. live peacefully as humans. Mm -hmm. And Emma's like, I don't want to. I don't want to. Because she doesn't want to annihilate the demons because she has a soft spot for them. And Mujika's her friend. And Mujika and Sanju saved them. Well, and she saw the demon children too in the town. Right. I was feeling all emotional like, oh, they have families too. And yeah. And so then she's like, we can't do that. And Ray, I did. I really appreciated the scene where Ray knows Emma well enough and is the one that's like, how are you really feeling? You're not being honest. And then he says, he's not even really trying to help her out as much as being like getting out ahead of it because mm-hmm. he's like, I know that you're not going to be able to actually go through with this. And then you're going to explode at like the worst possible moment. Mm hmm and try and put a stop to the plan and that's going to cause all kinds of problems. So we need to talk about it now. We need to be calm. We need to express ourselves, talk to Norman. And so Emma goes and tells Norman how she feels. Yeah. But I, okay. And I know that up until that point, she didn't, she wasn't aware of the degeneration of the demons because it was Norman that told that group, their group about that. But her plan to just take all the humans to the human world and save all the people in the farm anyway. I mean, that's ba- like, she basically wanted to destroy the farms, save all the humans, and escape to the human world. And that would have left the demons without human food mm-hmm. also. And so her plan wasn't actually different from Norman's plan. She just wasn't fully aware that they were going to degenerate. But they wouldn't have been able to eat humans. So in, like, either way, the plan was kind of the same thing. And mm-hmm. then only after she realizes, like, oh, well, we know Mujika and Sanju. They don't eat humans and they haven't degenerated. Let's go tell Norman about it. And then Norman informs them, like, oh, that's a special blood. I've been, like, searching for her or whatever. Yeah. And anyway, so then that was the only reason, though, that she went back to try and find Mujika and Sanju. Because at that point, she wasn't aware of the degeneration. So I guess I guess in her mind, her plan was super different. But. Well, I think she just wouldn't have had to have been the one killing people. And by people, I mean demons. Yeah. Like, she, I think that was the biggest thing for her. Because the plan, the outcomes would have been the same without Musica. Like, without the the blood and everything. Like, yeah, they would have just, I do think that a part of her, just like she didn't want to kill the humans, she didn't want to kill Andrew and the, the humans that were actually attacking them. Yeah. Because that's a hard thing to do. Unless... I They're forgot where I was going coming with after you to like kill all of your little siblings. It's pretty easy to put a bullet in someone's brain in that case. I feel like you, yeah, you're the fighting Andrew for your one, life. I was like he's half dead. He's a freaking monster. 
He wants to kill all of you. He literally has one of your little babies, like, in his arms. He's holding him hostage. Shoot him in the head. That's not a hard choice for me. Like, yeah, he's a human, but he's a freaking monster. He's not, like, a kind human that's going to, like, benefit the world in any way. Just get rid of him. Eliminate yeah. him. Peter Rattry, too. Nah, uh, yeah. There are, for sure. But she struggles with that in general. So for demons, even though they have, like, been eating all of her little siblings that she's like grown up with yeah she doesn't want she still has that kind side to her where she wants to just have hope i mean for the most part like any protagonist would have you know it's like yeah all of them have that like sweet side to them that they just believe anything is possible even if it's especially modern protagonists but yeah yeah i like emma's character a lot as a protagonist and i don't necessarily disagree with her plan Although I think that in a situation where you actually live in a world where demons are eating humans, I don't think you're going to sympathize too much with the demon families because they weren't naturally intelligent beings anyway. Like I think the right. degeneration process is natural for them. And if that's like part of what happens, because eating humans, that just sort of became part of their evolution and their process. But humans aren't responsible to continue the demon's evolution. That's the demon's right. responsibility. Right. And so... If the humans were to, like, eliminate them from their diet, the natural thing that would happen is that they would degenerate into wild animals, basically. And they could still live off other creatures, other living things. Just, Mm -hmm. like, they would just become part of, like, the circle of life. Nature. Yeah. You know, like a lion or something. Oh, and only they would continue to, like, become the things that they ate. So it's not that they would stop evolving or, like, stop existing. They just... And I know, like, in theory, Norman wanted that to happen, that they would just degenerate into nothing. Right. Right. And I don't think, going back to, I know you said you like to call him Norman Yeager, but yeah, just like I don't think anything was wrong with Aaron's plan. Yeah. I also don't think anything was wrong with Norman's. Yeah, I don't either. Like, I don't think he had a bad plan. Mm-hmm. You know, they kind of make it. I feel like they try to make him out to be, like, the bad guy in that situation. Like, he's going to do what? But it's, like, his plan's not... That's not bad to try to get rid of the people who are eating you. Like, that's that's okay to get rid of them, you well, especially know? Especially because at some point you have to say, okay, we could maybe, like, warn Mujika and Sanju, but am I going to choose their lives over these kids that I grew up with? And I know that Mujika and Sanju saved their lives, so they feel like they owe them, and they do feel this, like, special bond. And Mujika gave her that, like, amulet necklace thing. Mm-hmm. And so there, there is, like, a special relationship between the two of them. But we even see when the kids leave, Sanju is even like, oh, I can't wait until I can eat humans again. It's not like they're... Right. Their principles are in line with humans' principles. Like, well, are you looking and some out? of them have had Musica's blood. Right. Like, the higher-up people, all of them the higher up royals and everything had her blood and they still continued to want to eat the humans and not just any right. humans, but like the high quality, most delicious ones. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like that stopped them. Right. They didn't need to eat them, but that didn't stop them from doing it. Still. I think the vast majority. Well, I don't know because the citizens seem to be fairly reasonable and fairly human themselves. Like where if they were informed that humans also have families and that they feel things and that their intelligence actually comes from human intelligence and that they're like consuming mm-hmm. human culture and stuff. I think maybe they would be a little more sympathetic to the idea of not eating humans anymore. Well, maybe, but if they feel like they need that because that makes them intelligent. Yeah. It's not to say all the citizens are, they might attack them more. You know what I'm saying? I definitely like, think the vast majority of demons are probably going to just decide to eat humans mm-hmm. anyway, even if they don't need them. Here's the thing. I love Emma mm-hmm. as a protagonist. I mm-hmm. think she's one of the few, like female anime characters that are actually like completely admirable and completely just intelligent, strong, Mm -hmm. I agree, loving. She's very feminine. And on top of having this beautiful femininity, she also is extremely strong and independent. And she's like Mm -hmm. more of a real woman than these other characters that only care about their femininity or like only care about like being uh, like an object to be desired. Right. Emma's not even worried about that kind of stuff, right? right? Even if she has, like, romantic feelings for Ray, which is my theory. She, <laughs> <laughs> she can't, she doesn't even have, like, the time to not be on guard, right? There's never going to be, like, a night where they're like, let's go off together and talk about our feelings. Like, right. they're taking care of their family. Mm-hmm. 
And so Emma's priorities are in the right spot. She has a good heart. She's like extremely advanced as like a human. Like when she's 12 years old, she already understands that the most important thing in the world is family. Like even the demon God or whatever at the end, that's the deal she has to make is she has to give up the love of her life, which is her family. Right. She's going to lose all her memories of the people that she loves. And so she's, she's extremely mature. She's extremely intelligent. She's very protective. She's very like motherly, but also sisterly and also just like a leader. She's so strong. She's a hunter. And she also doesn't, she was, sorry. Oh, I just said she's great. Yeah. Yeah. She's awesome. But she, and she also does not turn her opinion. Like she doesn't change her opinion based on the fact that she realizes that the demons are eating humans. Cause it's like part of their lifestyle mm-hmm. because she's like, well, I hunt, right? Like I kill other animals. I eat other creatures. And instead of being like, Oh, I should stop eating other creatures. Cause it's wrong. She actually realizes and kind of respects the culture of the demons. And even like is kind of, she like reverences their, um, What's that little ceremony where they put the rose in the chest? Even though she saw that oh, happen to right. Connie, mm-hmm. she still is like, oh, it's like a, it's like a sign of respect. It's like a sign of gratitude. When I think Sanju teaches her that, mm-hmm. right? When they're hunting I or something. I think so, yeah. Anyway, I like that she, like, she's not made to be this protagonist that's, like, trying to teach the audience, like, a philosophical or, like, a political philosophy where, like, don't eat meat or, like, don't, like, that's not the message of the story at all. It's just observing and accepting the fact that, like, life takes life to survive. Like, living creatures eat each other. And the world is, like, a really tragic place if you have any kind of, like, awareness of that, that Mm -hmm. you're food to something else, that there's, like, a living creature that would just eat you Mm -hmm. for the pleasure of it or for survival. And that's kind of a tragic thing. But it's also the way that it is like nobody hates carnivores in nature right nobody's like lions are evil because they eat deer it's like that's Mm. that's what they do yeah and so i think and i'm not even saying like veg i being vegetarian being vegan that's totally fine i'm just saying i like that they didn't turn it into like a preachy political thing and that she just became aware of it and it's kind of like mikasa right which i know she's not your favorite character in the world nope (laughs) but when she realizes like life is extremely cruel but it's also very beautiful Mm -hmm. she just accepts like you have to fight to survive and people remind me who taught her that (laughs) no (laughs) i'm not talking about the fight and you'll survive i'm just kidding it's when she's like the bugs did save her multiple times aaron's fine and teach her to fight (laughs) and (laughs) i love aaron (laughs) oh my gosh (laughs) I don't think there's a single person in the world that knows you that doesn't know that you're in love with Aaron Yeager. Back to Norman Yeager, though. That's probably so Norman Yeager. His plan... His little brother. Is his little cousin. <laughs> his plan is totally flawless, and he knows that he doesn't have very much time to live, and so I think his thing is, like, before I die from mm-hmm. these complications from the experiments, I have to figure out a way to absolutely ensure the safety of my people. And Emma's thing is more like, well, let's think long term. Let's, and I think he, Norman almost thinks more like Aaron in that sense where he's like, I care about the people I grew up with, my family, the humans and the farms, like the here and now. And he's like, let's solve the problem right now. And Emma is sort of more like, I don't want to compare her to Armin, but she's more like. That's another character I don't like. Let's think long term. Like, let's. You know, how can we allow for, like, the good demons that are just eating humans because that's, like, part of their lifestyle Mm -hmm. to continue to live and have families and be intelligent and know that they have relationships and stuff and also not let human beings actually be eaten by them, which is good. I don't disagree with either one of them, really. I just don't think Norman's plan is as bad as it's made out to be. No, not at all. Like, when he starts crying and he's like, I don't want to kill the demons anymore, I was like, I don't think Norman actually feels like that. I think he's just realizing that he's hurt Emma and he's going to want to try and do everything he can to like soothe her heart. I think Norman is well, like, I'm going to die soon and mm-hmm. I need to get rid of the demons. I think that's, I don't know. Well, I think that Emma also, she's one of those characters that when she talks, you like want to believe everything she's saying. She says it with such passion. Yeah. And like what she's saying could actually happen and so i think norman being like oh my gosh what am i saying i think he just got caught up in the moment there to be like <laughs> that makes sense. oh i don't want to kill him anymore i think it's just he got caught up in the emotion that she was like 
pushing out of herself. You know what I mean? To like, pushing out of herself. <laughs> whatever. He was almost like putting his faith in her. Right. Because like she, do her, you so. do want, and I felt, I kind of, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Emma's a lot like Naruto, dude. She's like the female version of him, kind of. Anyway, keep going. I, we'll talk about that another I time. do agree with that, but, um, but that's the, th- it's like for me, I didn't care either way. I was fine with Norman's plan and I'm like, heck yeah, get rid of the demons. Like who cares? Yeah. They, whatever. It doesn't matter. And I wasn't then, super sad about Mojika and Sanji. I was like, that's just a sacrifice they have to make. Well, but even, <laughs> that's a, well, and that's fine. But even if they didn't find them and they wipe out all the other demons, they can still continue to live and just not ever right. eat the humans. Like, it's not like that. I mean, I, I Norman did want to find them and kill them. So that's, you know, a whole other issue, but. But that's fine too. He doesn't know that. Right. It's, that's, I mean, yeah, but you're, I mean, that's the thing. So I'm fine with Norman's plan. Yeah. But then when Emma talks, I'm like, oh, well, if her plan can like happen and yeah. it makes her happy and the way she talks about things, yeah. it doesn't ever make me feel like her plan is stupid. You know what I mean? Like that's not going to happen. Like what she, the way she just comes across and presents it and carries herself. You're like, oh, I believe that she can like do that. So if that can, if that can be carried out that way, cool. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm not necessarily against letting demons live, but I'm not against killing all of them either. So yeah, it's not. (laughs) And I think Ray is like the neutral one where he's like, I don't disagree with Norman's plan, but I know you and you're going to ruin it if we don't talk about this yeah, now. you're going to ruin it. And so I'll support you. Like, let's go have a conversation with Norman and mm-hmm. see if we can make everybody happy with a solution that's going to save the humans and also not massacre the demons, basically. Yeah. Well, and I think that Ray, one thing I love is just his development as a person. Like, at the mm-hmm. beginning, yeah. his whole thing is he doesn't think that he can save anyone more than just Emma and Norman. And... I mean, being when he first finds out, he's like so young and he's lived with us so his whole life as he like remembers everything. Right. And so he's like, there's nothing I can do. I mean, as a little kid trying to figure out what to do, feeling like you can save everyone does feel overwhelming. I feel like like I. Yeah. I'm not necessarily mad at Ray for feeling like he couldn't necessarily save everyone. And I think he was all alone. Well, right. He was by himself feeling like, what can I do? Well, what I feel like I can do is save my two best friends and get them out of here. And the three of us can survive somewhere together. Yeah. But then as he's ready to, and that's another thing I love that he is totally just willing to die to save Emma and knowing that Emma, if she's going to live, is probably taking everyone with her too. So then he knows that everyone else is going to be saved. He's like, if it can save everyone, then, you know, I'm willing to do this. And so... I love, though, that when they actually escape and he's watching the escape like unfold and sees Dawn and Gilda and all the other kids and they're not a burden. They're like ready to go and they're on top of it. They trained. Right. They did all this stuff. And then when they're out there and he's like looking at them again and just the progress that he he didn't think was like possible with them. Just being like, I can't ever believe that I ever wanted to like leave them behind. Yeah. And he says he's going to protect them and he is going to do everything for his family that includes all of them. And so I think I think that Emma, because of the character she is, makes Ray feel like the impossible situations are possible. And so mm-hmm. I think when she does present the plan, I don't think Ray's necessarily like, well, that's stupid. Like, that's not going to happen. I'm with Norman. I don't think he necessarily cares if the demons die. But I feel like Ray's like, I feel like that can be possible because Emma, again, has shown him different times that impossible situations can be possible and she's going to break everyone out. And then, you know, she did leave the, the kids behind knowing that they would have a few years to figure things out. Yeah. So it all kind of worked out well. But I, I like the way that he like develops and cares about his family, realizes he didn't want to leave them behind. He loves them. But then also because of that, he sees that's, what I'm trying to get at is that point when he's listening to Emma and I think he feels like it could happen. Like that's a real thing that could actually come to pass because Emma's the one like saying it to him. You know yeah. what I mean? It really is like Naruto. It just reminds me of every, <laughs> everything you're saying just makes me think like, yeah, she's the female Naruto. It's true. That's how I feel Which about Asta. Which makes me love her. Yeah. Asta's the same I way. I love Asta. Yeah. Or is He'll be the wizard king one day. Asta. He'll be the wizard king. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Of course he will. But yeah, I do. I think Emma is like a tremendously awesome protagonist. And I'm really, I really hope that 
a lot of like young girls read The Promised Neverland because I think she's actually the type of role model that young girls need, mm-hmm. right? People are always talking like, oh, Noelle from Black Clover is such a strong oh, female Noelle's character. Stupid. And I'm like, no, she's just not. And I don't know is. how anyone could say that. Noelle is literally like one of the dumbest female characters ever written. Yeah. But I love Emma. She's like the opposite of Noelle, mm-hmm. where she's always been about. Well, she ca- the thing is, it's not that she's 100% selfless. She also cares about herself. But because she cares mm-hmm. about herself and wants herself to be happy and safe and healthy, she also wants that for everyone else, too. Yeah. And so she's just a smart, mature, beautiful human. Mm-hmm. And I like, I, I honestly, dude, what, like, when my daughter gets to be the age where she can, like, read and understand manga, I'm going to be like, read this story and we'll talk about it. Yeah. I'm going to be like, I want you to be like Emma. She's rad, you know? Yeah. And I'm going to piss you off because I'm your mom. So anytime you don't want to be like me, read. Try to be like Emma. Read the manga again. Yeah. What would Emma do? What would Emma do? (laughs) 